We are in Tucson for the Gem and Mineral Show. This event takes over the city of Tucson. There are booths and tents filled with every type of gem and mineral that you could ever want. We came all the way out here to meet new experts and catch up with old friends, and we filmed it all for you. But first, we are gonna go shopping. Christopher and I challenged each other to see who can make the best finds for under $300. And we're gonna let you be the judge. So there are tons of different vendors here. We're gonna go around the show and see what we can find. I love Celestia. It's so pretty. And it's been on my list for a really long time. That has this really calming blue color to it. It's often in this like neutral gray matrix. They're heavy though. I'm a little bit nervous about the shipping process back home because that can get a little bit complicated and expensive. So my dreams might be dashed. We are at mineral and specimen dealer Cristali. There are some amazing specimens here, all sorts of colors. There's a demantoid specimen, which is definitely eye-popping. The yellowish green tourmaline from Pakistan is from Kashmir. All sorts of different dioptase, which just that color screams at you. Some sulfur, which is a very interesting specimen to see in mineral form. All right, roll. Fluorite has four planes of perfect cleavage, so I can't imagine how tricky these were to carve. We also spotted some great fire opal from Mexico. It's so cool because none are alike. They're all completely different. You have this opaque matrix, and then you have these pockets where you have this play of color in them. In this case, you see everything from reds, greens, yellows on this brownish backdrop. Contrast it with this, where you have kind of that bluish sheen. Oh, this is cute. It's a little heart. Love that. I think I know what I'm getting. Let's see how Christopher is doing. Christopher Clark here from Collector's Edge Minerals. Everybody here out at the Miners Co-op Show is either a digger or a doer. They've pulled it out of the ground or they've added some craftsmanship to it. A challenge is a challenge. Let's see what I can find. Of course, I made a beeline for spheres. Uh, I love collecting those. But I'm seeing one thing that I haven't seen before in a sphere right there on the end there. Is that what I think it is? Yeah, so this is Fordite. Is that Fordite there at the very end there? This is called Surfite. This started coming out, I'd say, probably about three years ago. There's even a couple of clear layers yeah. in there, too. Got some great straight from the mine source material. Ah, this is unique for me. I have never seen malachite form this way like a tube. I'm going to have to do some research in and figure out what in the world is going on there. And the location's not Bisbee like I was originally thinking. You were saying it's Utah? Amazing. Let your eyes adjust here in a second. We're gonna go into the dark and see some incredibly glowing minerals. Yeah, there we go. Vaseline glass is one I know from doing a lot of my estate and garage sales. This has traces of uranium in it, giving it that amazing glow. This is a custard glass. Doesn't seem to have quite the transparency, but it's even brighter. Here, we have Franklinite, Willamite, and Calcite, giving you all these different green and red colors. But I'll tell you, my favorite gemstone of all is opal, and there's a fluorescent variety called Hyalite. I really like this one because it's got the little spot right in the middle of it. I'm over here at Chuck's Rocks, and I've uh, spotted some fire agate. Uh, phenomenal gems are one of my favorites. Wow, look at the iridescence on that one. But Chuck here is wearing something that really caught my eye. As a gemologist, I, you gotta have a hand lens or your loop with you, and look at the turquoise work on this. This is absolutely gorgeous. So it's a cast of a rattlesnake tail. It's an actual cast yeah, of a rattlesnake yeah, tail. Yeah. Lost wax casting. Yeah, absolutely. Spectacular. I'll tell you this, when you see something that you absolutely know that you're going to buy and it's one of a kind, you buy it immediately. This is probably gonna absolutely bust me. Okay, time to unbox. So there are shows all over the city, lots of gems and minerals to discover. I don't know anything about what you've gotten. Same here. You don't know anything about I'm mine. I'm really excited to find out. Okay, so you're the guest. I think you should go first. Okay, fine. Here you go. I will say my box is bigger than your box. <laughs> well, good things come in small packages. Ooh. Okay, there's a clue. There is a clue. 
Earth, wind, and fire. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will be curious to see what you mean by that. <laughs> Ooh, lots of stuff in there. A little treasure chest. So you got multiple pieces for $300. Yes. Okay, earth. I have no clue. Is it enamel? Nope. Is it natural? No. Okay. Is it fordite? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the earth just has to uh, do with the shape. Because okay. you know the I like sphere. spheres. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen a sphere of this material before. So Love that piece. My understanding of this is that there was like excess from like Ford Motor um, well, companies and it was. Literally, you have the room where they paint all the cars. Yeah. And all the paint goes on and it just drops down and drops yeah. down. And so it's just the layers that have built up over time and they sell it in large blocks. So sometimes people call it automotive agate or Detroit city agate or Detroit agate, all sorts of different names for it, but it's yeah the hardened and layered paint from painting cars. Okay, well I, I sense another sphere mm -hmm. here. Okay, there are parts of it that are transparent. Mm -hmm. This one was brand new to me. Okay, well, I certainly won't know it then. <laughs> this one is actually more of a resinous material. This is surfite. Surfite. So this is the residue of when they make surfboards. And I love that, unlike Fordite, you never see a clear layer in Fordite. So I thought it was just super cool, super colorful. Love that. Okay, so that's earth. That's Any... earth. The wind actually isn't on the table when oh. we were out at the miners' co-op. It was, in, like, I'm still coughing dust up a little bit. It was incredibly windy. This year at Tucson, it has been cold and windy, still beautifully sunny mm -hmm. most days. So I see some fire. Yes. We have some fire agate. Mm -hmm. Fire agates have tiny platelets of iron between thin layers of chalcedony. This causes beautiful interference colors. It looks best in the sunlight. You can really see that red blaze more even in the sunlight. This little guy has like complete coverage. And you know how it is with opals. You want complete colors, yes. you want a ten intense color. Those two were two of my best buys at the show. $15 for the pair, 10 for the big, five for the small. Nice. So I think I got these two for 60 together. Okay, 60. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> this. I, knowing you could have nothing in it or something in it, and it has something in mm -hmm. it. Because you like um, storage boxes, like different types of things to hold jewelry in. So. And what else do I collect? You'll notice I'm not wearing one today. <laughs> uh, you collect bolo ties. Now this one is cool. It's like a rattlesnake. Yeah. Is that fire agate? Yeah. How Slaughter cool Mountain, Arizona, which I believe is where these guys are coming from as well. You say it's like a rattlesnake. It's lost wax casting in sterling silver of actual rattlesnake tails, the buttons that have fell, fallen off. Yeah. That um, is cool. One of the quickest purchases I've ever made. What are we getting this at? 200 was that one. I was thinking you you would be willing to spend a little bit more cash oh, on Oh yeah, that. absolutely. Like I was just like, carat. oh, that's a big part of my budget. but. But Absolutely worth it. I totally think that's worth it. I like that. And then one last little piece here. I have no clue what this is. Uh, well, I can give you a little clue if I can grab my light over here. Oh, is that, um, no, I know what that is. Highlight opal. I definitely was not gonna get that. Okay, one of the neatest little uh, fluorescences you can find. And this one, was a mere $15. That is wild. There are some crazy deals. I think I stayed a little bit under budget. I think if I did my math right there, I'm like right around 290. I went a little bit different of a route. Mine's just a little bit different. All right. Some people think I look like a vegetable and some think I look sweet. Okay, I'm we'll stumped on this think. one. All right, let's see. Now, I will say, my first thought where Rebecca's concerned, tourmaline and diamonds. <laughs> so, oh. So you're there right. We go. So, this is a tourmaline, as you noted. When I saw it in the case, it looked like, oh, that's a yellowish green. But when you yeah, look at it closely, I'm you can it. see those hints of pink in there. Yes. This material is from cashmere, which is, Ooh. yes. So that's, okay, that's unusual. That's one of the reasons why I bought yeah. it. I really like collecting by locality. Kashmir is in the northeastern region of Pakistan. It's at the mm -hmm. tip of the Himalayan mountains. For 
for geopolitical reasons, sourcing can be difficult. Mm -hmm. The crystals are really well formed. The terminations look nice. They do. This is really good because, yeah, you just see that that pink comes right through with the green just perfectly framing it. You even get it end on yes. when you've got the light coming through and scattering down the crystal. But yeah, a great form, a nice little cluster kind of radiating outward. Really, really nice. So I was excited about it. It was priced at three fifty, oh, and we, we got it at well, three hundred. Well, you, you taught me well. And I Thank think you. we both came out really I, well. Same. On this. Typically, we do a closer look on this channel, but let's face it, we both like what what we bought. We love all so of this. let's take a closer look at all of them. Christopher, thank you for playing the game with me. That, that was, was fun. That was yeah, really fun. Absolutely. Was, I finally got to go out and actually do yeah, some shopping games, Michelle. It's always fun to see the wide variety of gems and minerals at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, but it's important to do your research beforehand. So if you want to learn more about gems and minerals, go to gemstones.com where we have a ton of information for you. How do you think we did? Let us know in the comments. We've got a lot more coming your way from the Gem and Mineral Show. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you can catch it all. Stay tuned to this channel so you don't miss out on all the cool things we have for you in Tucson.